Hey guys, Jeff here from Diverse Dimensions. Uh, just wanted to give you another little tip or little trick here. Um, inside of Polyworks, I've got 2020 open here, and I've just got a really simplistic measurement that I'm doing today on a handful of parts. But what I want to show you guys is how we can do ballooned drawings inside of Polyworks. So a balloon drawing is nothing more than a, uh, a drawing that will point the finger toward a dimensional output, but it's just a good roadmap on how to correlate dimensional or measured output to a drawing. Sometimes um, some of my clients will call that a bubbled drawing uh, or balloon drawing, so kind of the same thing, but I'm just going to show you how we can easily do that inside of Polyworks for just a quick little tie between the picture of the drawing and the output of the dimension. So jump into here with me. You can see I've got a uh, pretty simplistic measurement here. This, this part doesn't even have a CAD model. So if I go to the 3D scene, I'm just nothing there. But what I've got so far is I've got the drawing um, in inside of here. I've, I've pulled that in from their PDF, just did a screenshot of that. And I've got that here in my in my report. And we've got a standard format for uh, for reporting here that we've come up with as um, as a diverse dimensions as a company here and if you ever need to know how to to make that kind of a report or to make a um, a formatted report like this uh, reach out and uh, we could we could take you through that as well um, with some additional training but it's beautiful the way polyworks handles reporting you can pull corporate identity into that thing phone numbers all this information from the clients going to show up down here so this is a, a pretty powerful reporting package all inside of Polyworks but what I want to show you is how simple we can take this dimensional output from this drawing and just make a balloon from it so if I've got this dragged in here this little output picture from the drawing if I right click I can just create a text field so once I grab this, you can see I can drag it around a little bit. I'll just put it someplace where I can see what I'm typing in there. And you can see my little box up in the corner here. I'm just going to say that hole is going to be called dim one. So when I measure that hole, I'm going to have a dimension one as the output. So once I've got this into this, this text box, I can right click on him and I go to the font properties. And then I say, let's change that. I like to see that as an aerial. And I love it when that turns to be red. So all of these these ideas here, whatever you want to do to your text, will show up in, in this box here. So there I've got that in there. My, my text box is kind of big. I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit. Just click and drag on the handles here. And then I can right click on that box as well, just like I did here, and go to properties of that. So then my text field has these. I could have changed the font here as well. That would have shown up here. But I do like this alignment here to be in the center. And I do want a border on there that's going to be red as well. And say OK there. And then if I apply that, notice what happens. Everything's kind of centered and it looks like this. If I click out of it, you can see that box there. Click back in and you could drag it. Let's put it right about here just to say that dim one is associated to this dimension or this output of this um, of this circle size if you needed to have another dimension here um, because really this client just needs this whole location and size from this trim edge super easy if I wanted to take this I like the way this is formatted if I click on it right click and if I go copy and then just hit the right click any place and say paste I can click and drag this guy here and I can hit uh, the right mouse key again, go paste, grab them again, put them here. So now I've got a double clicked inside of there. And then I can change him to two. Double click inside of there, call him dim three. So now in my model tree over here, once I start to populate this with measured features, this whole location is going to be known as a circle. That's going to be dim one. Um, and then my dimensions here from these trim edges will be known as dim two and three. So it's just a simple way to tie in this drawing and these dimensional output figures back to my measured features.